What, what I spoke about in my talk yesterday is uh, the building a, a diagram or an understanding of how energy flows through a rainforest landscape built around the, the SAFE project in, in Southeast Asia. And what I mean by energy flow is how energy is captured by plants uh, from sunlight and then how it transfers from, that, from there to either herbivores or decomposers such as termites and how it cycles through all the way up to vertebrates and, and, high, and carnivores and higher level consumers. And we all learn about the, these trophic food webs in our, in our basic ecology courses, but it's actually quite rare for the numbers to be put together to describe the flow of this energy, this captured sunshine through an e ecosystem. And SAFE is an excellent opportunity to do this because so much data have been collected across so many different types of, of taxa. So one level we've got carbon flux towers measuring the photosynthesis of a whole canopy. We understand growth of roots and leaves and, and wood. And on another level we've got detailed surveys of the mammals, the birds, the invertebrates. So it's one of the few places that we can actually try and put these bits of a jigsaw together and assemble this picture. And it's really only been done once before for a rainforest which is in Puerto Rico in the 1960s. So we're long overdue with new techniques and new understanding to attempt this in the, in the safe forest landscape. Uh, there, there are a number of uh, uh, practical aspects and, and the, how we collect this data depends very much on which part of the ecosystem we're looking at. So for vegetation, we need to simply understand the productivity of the vegetation, how much roots and leaves and wood are, uh, are, are being produced. When we get on to some of the easier animal taxa, uh, uh, so we just uh, like vertebrates or, or litter invertebrates, uh, we just need to know uh, the abundance, how many of how those animals there are per hectare or per square kilometre, and the body mass, and what they eat, whether they're herbivores or carnivores or some sort of mix. And from that we can actually, using some basic empirical equations that have been derived, we can, if you know the mass of an animal, you can pretty much understand its energy needs and, and, and consumption. When we get to the soils, it gets more complicated. We have to work uh, with an unknown mass of fungi and, and bacteria and it becomes more of a challenge, but there are other approaches that, that we can use that. So we have to take this, this scatterbag of approaches to try and build this diagram. And then to build it, we don't need a model, we just actually need, it's, it's almost like a spreadsheet like, like a pr approach where you just get these little bits together and then, then glue them all together to come up with it, the, this, uh, this overall uh, picture. So in terms of the questions, well, one, of the, one of the things that uh, is also interesting about the safe landscape is that we can contrast uh, an intact old growth rainforest with a, uh, a logged forest and see uh, how these energy flows uh, are different. And at the moment, we're still in the process of constructing these energy flows. So what I did yesterday was just highlight two aspects of this diagram, the vegetation production energy flow in vegetation and the energy flow in mammals as one sort of end user of that, of, of that energy. And, uh, and what we can do is see how the amount of energy being consumed by mammals shifts from the old growth rainforest to the logged forest. And to our surprise, we found uh, that there was a, twice as much resources available to mammals in the logged forest than in the old growth forest. There's a lot more energy reaching up to, to the mammals. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and why this occurs is that uh, in an old growth rainforest, a lot of that energy is in leaves in the upper forest canopy and not many creatures can get up there uh, and access it. When you open up a forest, firstly, a lot of that canopy is now on the ground in, the terms, in terms of grasses and gingers and things that, that are accessible. And secondly, it's more palatable. Things are racing for light and they're not chemically defending themselves to not be, not be eaten. And, uh, uh, and so what we see is a much greater productivity of mammals in the logged forest. And I think why this is important is that uh, one of the key findings that's coming out of this SAFE project is how rich and valuable logged forests are. And this doesn't diminish the immense value of old growth forests and the particular species that are specialized to old growth forests. But what it does do is feed into saying, we can't think, we can't use this almost pejorative term, degraded forests to talk about logged forests. These are vibrant ecosystems, full of diversity, full of ecosystem functionality. In some cases, supporting 
a higher productivity of, of key taxa such as mammals than, than even the old growth forest. And so sometimes we think, well, we love, we'll uh, land use change should be focused on degraded systems to protect the old growth. But actually, many of these degraded systems are vital and functional systems that we should protect and restore uh, as, as much as possible. I, I think that it's, a, it's good. Uh, it depends on what the reference point is. And I think uh, all of us would argue that old growth forests, where they occur, need to be protected. They, they host uh, a lot of particular and rare diversity, whether it's ancient trees or whether it's all the taxa that specialize on those or specialize in the rainforest understory. There, there's lots of reasons to protect the old growth forest. But I think in practice, a lot of the debate is, is not between old growth versus logged, it's logged versus agricultural conversion. If these forests have been logged, there's an, sometimes an argument can be made, they've already lost their value, so let's turn them into something product, productive land, agricultural land. And I think this is where we can feed into that debate and saying, no, these are immensely valuable forests and this is how they're valuable and this is how we, we, we can restore their value. So I, I think we have to be careful. I think we, we don't want to send the wrong messaging there, but, but, but uh, I think there's an Im immensely positive message about logged forests that, that, that can also come out there. Uh, the wonderful thing about this approach is that it also it integrates the whole spectrum of, of science done in, in a project like say from the vegetation and carbon dynamics all the way through to the details of termites in the soil and uh, and, uh, uh, and elephants roaming through, through the landscape. So uh, the wonderful thing about it is no one team could do this. It requires this sort of consortium effort and consolidating it uh, to produce this sort of work. And also it's a, it's a framework that actually brings everybody's specialities together into an overarching understanding that we can all work on our particular bits that would interest us, but this provides at least one possible way of putting all those little bits of the jigsaw together to have a whole rainforest ecosystem understanding and ask, ask a whole different set of questions that we can't ask if we just focus on one particular taxon. In, in terms of uh, if, if people have insights and things, uh, certainly go look, look at what's available on the SAFE website, but there's also if people contact me uh, if uh, people have bits of data either from SAFE or from related sites that could contribute and I'd be very open to having discussions about ways of making this a community and a collective effort.